The deep mining of coal produces large amounts of waste material. Much of it must be disposed of on the surface. With progressive restoration, the land is returned quickly to beneficial use. The quality of the available soils will determine what can be achieved. Natural soils have three identifiable layers, topsoil, subsoil and parent material. The topsoil is darker in colour than the subsoil. The topsoil consists of mineral particles mixed with organic material. It provides the plants with nutrients, water and support. The subsoil is usually thicker. If the structure is open, deeper rooting plants will exploit the water and nutrient. The subsoil is derived from the weathering of the lowest layer in the profile, the parent material. A free draining parent material can be useful as a soil making material. To successfully plan any restoration scheme, it's necessary to determine the depth, quality and distribution of soils and soil making materials. On some sites there are considerable variations in the nature of the soils and their depth. In restoration, soils may not need to be replaced to their original thicknesses. In fact, it may benefit after use if the soils are redistributed. The survey provides the basis for the restoration scheme. After the main soil types have been identified by augering, soil samples are collected from trial pits. These are sent to the laboratory for physical and chemical analysis. The results determine the specification for soil handling and what will be needed by way of lime and fertilizer. This model sequence demonstrates progressive restoration. Here is the site. The initial step is to strip topsoil from a first area and stock it for later reuse. The subsoil, represented by the yellow, is also stripped and stored separately. The stripped area awaits dipping. The first stage of the tip is constructed and graded to final profile. The next area is now stripped to advance the tip. The soils that have been stripped are laid over the completed part of the tip. The second area is tipped and graded. The third strip is taken. The soils are placed on the second part of the tip. Meanwhile, final restoration has begun with the cultivation and planting of the first part. So the process continues, stripping, tipping and replacement of soils until the final phase is reached. The final tipping stage is completed. The soils that were put into stock at stage one can be replaced.
restoration is complete. The site can realize its new potential. Here is a tip undergoing progressive restoration. This area of tip is completed and ready for subsoil. Beyond, the subsoil has been replaced. In the distance is the topsoiled and grassed area which has been returned to the farmer. Land which is to be stripped should be well managed. This will ensure that the soils are in the best possible condition to resist the effects of stripping and storing. Should soil be moved when it is too wet, its texture and structure will be destroyed by smearing and compaction. Soils should only be handled when they are at their driest. The soil survey will identify the conditions which are suitable. These will normally occur in the summer. To avoid unnecessary compaction, the vehicles should use common tracks. Each soil type is lifted carefully in sequence from the site. Topsoil, subsoil, any soil making materials. Each should be kept separate unless the specification allows mixing. Whenever possible, the stripped soil should be taken and placed on a completed section of tip. Putting soil to stock involves double handling, increasing the risk of physical damage. Where topsoil is stored for a prolonged time, it will deteriorate. Topsoil and subsoil should be stocked separately unless mixing is specified. But soil making materials may benefit from weathering by breaking down in storage. Long term storage mounds should be seeded to improve their appearance. Gentle slopes allow easy maintenance of the grass. A grass mound can be used for screening. A tip being progressively restored displays all the stages of restoration. When an area of tip has been completed and graded to final profile, the surface should be prepared to receive the soils. Tip surfaces are usually heavily compacted and weathered. Air, water and roots are unable to penetrate. Some spoils present chemical problems of salinity and acidity. The acidity can be neutralized by adding lime. Heavy dressings may be required. Ripping the spoil relieves compaction and encourages the removal of salts by leaching. After ripping and removal of any large rocks and debris, the spoil is disked to break down large lumps and restore a smooth surface. These operations also mix the lime with the spoil. The surface of the tip is now ready to receive subsoil. In spoil disposal, compaction is necessary. Restoration asks the opposite. To minimize compaction, the soil should be placed in as few passes as possible. 
First moving plant should avoid travel on the replaced soil. It must always keep to common roots. The soils are laid to specified depth and correctly graded to profile. Since heavy plant is employed, some compaction is inevitable. This will be relieved by ripping. Any lime or fertilizer the subsoil may need can be added at this stage. The ripping will incorporate the lime. Having replaced the subsoil, the topsoil will then be laid from an area being stripped. Topsoil laying needs even greater care than subsoil. Again, haphazard travel over the surface must be avoided. The topsoil is placed in thick, even layers in the fewest passes. No matter how many vehicles are employed, they should all follow the same tracks, travelling as little as necessary on the restored soil. The topsoil must be placed in a loose and friable condition. Before replacement, the soil should be tested to determine the lime and fertilizer needs for the proposed crop. For soils transferred directly from well-managed land, the amounts may be small, but where they are brought from stock, high inputs may be required. Any lime is best incorporated during ripping or deep ploughing. Once the topsoil has been replaced and compaction relieved, farming can begin. Soil is broken down by disking and harrowing to a fine tilt suitable for a seedbed. Usually, sites are restored to grass, although cereals can be grown where conditions are ripe. The choice of a seed mixture depends on the state of the soil and the proposed after use. The appropriate amount of fertilizer is spread. Harrowing ensures that seed and fertilizer are covered. Rolling firms the surface to promote germination. Grass encourages early development of good soil conditions. Most grass will contain clover, which can fix atmospheric nitrogen to enrich the soil. Where agricultural soils are in short supply, Spoil may have to serve as subsoil or even topsoil. Vegetation can grow on colliery spoil.
but to create agricultural growth, lime, fertilizer and cultivation will be needed to improve physical conditions. On restored tips, trees enhance the landscape. They may be used for screening or to provide shelter belts and will help blend the restored site into the existing landscape. The effort put into restoration will be wasted if the land is not looked after. Whatever the after use, it will only thrive if properly managed and maintained. The land must be adequately drained. The land must be fenced to keep unwelcome visitors out and to keep grazing animals in. There must be a water supply. The land will need fertilizer and lime. The land must be grazed or mown. The land must be kept in good heart. The use of land for tipping is temporary. Progressive restoration, utilizing modern techniques and machinery, quickly restores tipping land to new productive uses.